Hello everyone and welcome to this week's weekly wear wherein I'm going to be testing a, another product from the brand One Size by Patrick Starr. I have got the new re, newly released Turn Up The Base Triple BB, no, Triple B Cream. It's the Beauty Blur Balm. For your typical one ounce of product, it is $33 and it comes in 18 different shades. I might be blind, but I, I don't... Are there arm swatches? I don't see any arm swatches, but I do see models. So here we go. I mean, it looks like a decent shade range. It looks like we've got deep shades. It looks like we've got light shades. I don't know. There might be a fair shade. I was having trouble figuring out the shade range, honestly, based on these models and based on the comments on Sephora's website. It seems like the shade range might be a little confusing. Like some people saying the fair shades are not actually fair. They're actually really deep, that sort of a thing. But this is supposed to be a revolutionary, one-of-a-kind blurring beauty balm. It's gonna improve the appearance of skin texture, with all day hydration and comfortable all day wear. I mean, that doesn't sound revolutionary, but hey, if that's what Patrick Starr wants to claim, I, he sure did. I love seeing that it's supposed to be good for acne and blemishes. It's oil-free, vegan, cruelty-free, alcohol-free, and long wearing, all great things to see. And yeah, once again, it just says that this is supposed to be a triple threat against texture. It's got skincare in it and oil absorbing properties, as well as hydration properties gonna be breathable, undetectable, skin-like finish, and why they only tested 33 participants? I don't know. I, listen, I have questions, not answers. But those 33 participants all said that it's hydrating, it makes the skin feel smooth, and it is extremely lightweight. How to use? It's versatile. Interesting that using a beauty sponge gives fuller coverage than a brush, according to the suggested usage, but anywho, that that is what it is. So I got fair three. It's fair with golden undertones. I don't know you guys. I did my best. We shall see. Definitely an interesting bottle here. It looks like kind of a typical foundation squeezy bottle, but then it looks like you push up on this. I like that. That's something new. I mean, does it make a difference? I don't know. It's just different from your typical screw off cap. So, as per usual, my friends, got my glasses for the glasses wearers of the world out there. No primer on day one. We're gonna try half of the face with a brush, half with a sponge. We have got things, variables that we are gonna be testing. So, let's see how this does. I'm still a little confused, just like, oh, is there? I think there might be a safety seal after I just talked about not having to screw this off, but hey, safety seal. We'll love to see it. Boop. Boop. So I'm still a little, because it's a BBB cream, it makes me think this is gonna be like a BB cream, but then the claims and stuff make it seem a bit more foundation-y. Okay, as much as I liked this, uh, maybe it's gonna be very messy. Thought that counts? I think we're just gonna have to go with that. It smells like a foundation, I think. Yes. It's apparently just been a while since I've worn anything. I couldn't discern in my mind whether that was a foundation smell or a sunscreen smell. No, it's, it's foundation smell. I'm pretty positive. But it certainly, it has a bit of a cooling feel to it, like that moisturizing cooling feel. As you can see, I have got blemishes that I am going to be attempting to cover today. We shall see. But yeah, it looks like it blended in nicely. It certainly does make the skin feel soft. I would say, it, say that it gave a fairly light amount of coverage. Now let's see, once again, I am very confused why they said sponge would give more coverage, but let's go ahead and test it out. Let's see. But yeah, I, I don't think that that gave more coverage. I, I would say it gave comparable coverage, but I think there's more coverage on the brush side. And it does say in the usage that this is buildable. Yeah, I'm gonna take that back. This is just messy. Messy, 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 messy. Cute idea. I also just squeezed out way too much. Don't worry, I'm not using that whole second dose there, but I do wanna see about building coverage. And 
there we have it. So I was certainly able to build up coverage. I do think it is detectable on the skin. You know, it certainly doesn't have that second skin look. Although I would say it does have that second skin kind of a feel. I can barely tell that I'm wearing foundation right now, which is nice. It does look a little dry, heavy, cakey in a couple areas, especially uh, everywhere actually. <laughs> There are just little spots everywhere, like on my, in the middle of my forehead, my nose, my nostrils, my chin. But uh, yeah, this is what we're working with. So I'm gonna work with it. We're gonna see how this does. And I am hoping it does a lot better than the powder foundation from this brand. We shall see. Time will tell. And I will be telling you in just a second here. Ready? Ding! Hello everyone, good evening. It's the end of the night here on day one. I've got all sorts of cat hair on my face. I just can't help myself. When I get home, I grab a cat and I smoosh my face into him. And you know, life is good until I put the cat down and then the residual. But hey, that's life. And speaking of life, I lived it. And now I can show and tell you all about how the foundation wore. I'm curious to see myself. So let's take a peek. All right, we've got some cat hair. We've got some mascara flakes. And we still have foundation. So that's good to see. I was about to say, I guess I didn't expect it to be one way or another. Wow, mom, thanks for telling me I had chocolate on my lip, by the way. <laughs> But I guess, considering how that powder foundation from this brand went last week, I figured this one would be just as greasy and oily and nasty looking. But this one looks much better. I mean, it doesn't look perfect by any means. It certainly has come off on my nose and just in general, like on my chin and whatnot. But it doesn't look as bad as I thought. I mean, it certainly has some caking and cracking going on around my mouth. But aside from that, just kind of general wear. So that's actually very exciting for me to see. It has been lightweight, I guess, on my greasy areas, like my forehead and my nose. I've been a bit trepidatious about touching in those areas because it's feeling a little oily in those areas. But overall, it has felt lightweight and I haven't noticed like excessive transfer or anything. And like the excessive amount of transfer of cat hair onto my face, okay. So I am gonna go ahead and take my makeup off, go to bed, and then continue living my life for a couple more days here. I will continue testing out this foundation. I'll try it with a couple different primers on underneath to see if it can maybe help to get it to stick around on my nose a bit longer and whatnot. And I will be back in just a second to report all of that to you. So, all right, here we go. Ready? Ding! Double ding! Hello everyone, good evening. End of the night here on day three. I have results. Darn it. <laughs> I always want to give my opinion right away, I guess, and then I'm like, but doesn't that spoil their, like, and then people aren't gonna need to. Let me show you. You guys saw day one, now day two. I went ahead and tried out my Smashbox hydrating primer along with my Milk Makeup Flex concealer and once again used a brush and a sponge to apply. I thought, you know, even though I always wait for my primer to have time to dry down and everything before putting product on top of it, but this went on quite patchy this time. I thought I was able to get the foundation to blend. I just thought it went on patchier than I remembered it doing on day one. So, of note, was the hydrating primer a good choice with the mattifying foundation? Ah, questionable. But I wanted to give it a try since I thought it looked a little too matte on day one. You know, I thought overall it looked okay on my skin. It didn't look atrocious or anything. But I did have some settling into my wrinkles on my forehead and just overall it looked quite matte once again, a bit more matte than I personally like. And it also throughout the day of wear it just felt matte and flat. I don't know, it didn't feel uncomfortable or anything. It's just, I could tell. It, it felt flat, I feel like is a better way of saying than matte. It just felt like my skin didn't necessarily look hydrated and or glowing. Which like, I guess from a mattifying product, I really shouldn't expect that, but I guess I like that feeling on my face better than a matte feeling on my face, even though I 
Do I prefer a matte look? Listen, this is stirring up a lot of questions that I guess I didn't realize I had for myself. I do like some mattifying in my foundation because <laughs> I have such oily skin, but I guess I don't like it to take away all of the oils or all of the shine or the dewiness on my face because then it just looks unnatural. Do you guys get what I'm saying? hopefully. So it was a filming, editing, cooking, cleaning kind of a day yesterday when I tried out the foundation and I I guess I wasn't expecting it to look horrendous at the end of the night but I definitely didn't expect it to look as good as I thought it did once I finally checked in at the end of the night. Seriously it looked way better than I expected. I think somehow my oils gelled with the mattifyingness of the foundation or something and helped it to look less matte by the end of the night. There was very little fading. It was still fairly matte looking, all things considered, and there was very little transfer on my fingers with the swipe test. I did think overall though, it looked kind of mask-like on my face, mainly because of how orange it turned. This really did oxidize. So while I thought it looked much better than day one, it still didn't look the way I like my foundations to look. So for day three here, I said, you know, I mean, I use my beautiful balls on day three anyways usually, but like especially this time I was like, okay. So no primer wasn't the best. Hydrating primer was also maybe not the best choice. <laughs> maybe mattifying will go well with mattifying. Yeah, no. So I tried that out and also used my Laura Mercier concealer today. And once again, though, I felt like it went on patchier than I remembered it going on on day one. I don't know if I did something super special on day one that I just couldn't replicate on days two and three, but I did feel like it went on a little patchy again today. Granted, I was able to blend it out and everything, I think, and got it to look okay, at least up to my standards, which granted are not uh, perfection or anything, but my standards were met, okay? I felt like I looked fine. And overall throughout the day, you know, it was kind of a errand running, had dinner with my dad, did some more cleaning around the apartment, editing, that kind of stuff. So, you know, a pretty normal day, but we had a little bit more activity, I guess, in terms of going out and about into the world. And once again, it has had that matte feeling to it. It, I, I really don't feel like I have to worry about it transferring. Maybe I have that feeling kind of like on my forehead where I'm oiliest, but overall I haven't felt worried about mask, that sort of a thing. But like looking at my face, I mean, granted, I think, my forehead looks pretty good here. Once again, I feel like my oils were able to come out and naturally kind of gel with everything, but certainly on my nose, my nostrils, you can see where the foundation wore off and it does look like it has some problems with cracking around my mouth again. Even though today I did use a much lighter layer, I didn't even layer the foundation today, so. I do feel like maybe it looks a little less orange today, but like still I do think it oxidized. So do you see why I didn't want to tell you at the beginning? My feelings are very mixed on this one. I just don't know. I certainly like this better than the powder foundation from the One Size brand line of products but I can't see myself reaching for this in the future. I might give it a try, especially more so once summer rolls around and I'm really, really oily and shiny. I might give it a try as a mix-in, but other than that, I guess I just don't have much desire to wear this again. That being said though, I can see some pros to the product, so I can see where some people might wanna give it a try and maybe they would end up liking it. But certainly there's more cons, but either way, pros and cons, let's go through them. For the pros, I do have to give it credit. This is very lightweight. Like if you want a lightweight foundation, this is one of the lightest. Like it really hardly feels like you have anything on your skin at all. It's really only the oily parts of my face where I feel like this foundation is detectable. So on all of my dry areas, dry. My normal areas, like my cheeks and whatnot, it doesn't even feel like I'm wearing foundation at all, so I do have to give it that credit. And it also is mattifying, which for some people this is the look that they like. And myself included, I do like having some mattifying in there so that I can help with my oils. It just, for me, it 
over mattified but at the same time I do know there's a market for this kind of a matte matte look so unfortunately this is as you can kind of tell I'm sure I think this is where the cons start to roll in first being as much as I like the idea of that flip up and down lid it's really messy and then since usually the way you store those bottles is on that lid it just there's foundation on the outside of it so if you're storing this like on your desk or something it's gonna get foundation everywhere it's just a really messy packaging good in concept maybe not so much in practice I also did have some trouble with the foundation applying patchily onto my skin throughout the day I found that you know just like with the powder foundations so I don't know there's something in these two products but it just it really I feel like tends to lean very orange and tends to oxidize on my skin it can also look cakey and cracked around my mouth like I showed you and I think that came from it being too matte looking for me anyways for my taste so I do think that that encompasses it I think that's my review on this foundation. As always, you guys can let me know. Things do translate different on camera, but I hope for the most part you're able to see what I'm talking about and just get my feelings through my words as well and just trust me in what I'm saying. And also trust what you're seeing in the sense that I just hope that this is a well-rounded review for you. You can make a decision whether or not you're gonna buy or try this product in the future. Please let me know all of the things down below have you tried out this product what kind of skin do you have how did it fare on your skin please I love cooking up that kind of a casserole of comments in the comments down below so that other people can read through them as well if they're trying to get a feel for whether or not this is something they're gonna want to purchase you can also let me know if there are future weekly wears that you want to see from me I do believe next week it's going to be the new NARS foundation which I'm super excited about you can also also just you know let me know how you're doing all that good stuff you can like the video if you enjoyed it, found it helpful, whatever the case may be. You can also, if you're new here, hey hi, hello, how are you? You can go ahead and subscribe, tippity tap the notification bell down below, and become a member of my casserole family here on my channel. I'd love to have you here, and as always, I just hope you guys are all doing well, and until next time, just stay well until then. Bye!